In this video, I'm going to talk about some comic books that are massively going up in price. They are on fire right now. They are going up by 2,531%. Yes, you heard that right. These comic books are going up by 2,001%. That is a ton. But to really understand why these comic books are going up, we have to understand the person behind these comics. So I ask you, what is Hello Kitty, Indiana Jones, Michael Jackson, a failed comic book shop, and a place that I personally used to party throughout my 20s all have in common? The answer is one person, a comic book artist named Dave Stevens. Most people know Dave Stevens from The Rocketeer, which not only started off as a hit comic book back in 1982, but became a cult classic movie released by Disney in 1991. The Rocketeer first appeared in Star Slayer No. 2 through Pacific Comics. Originally, Mike Grail was set to release his new series Star Slayer through DC, but this was during the time of the DC implosion, which is where many of the DC comic book titles were being canceled because they just had too many of them and they weren't selling very well. So, so Grail decided to take his comic book to a new publisher, Pacific Comics. And by the second issue, he was actually a few pages short. So Pacific Comics went to a person they knew, Dave Stevens, to see if he could fill in a few pages with a backstory of his own creation. And what they got was actually The Rocketeer. This is Star Slayer 2, it's the first appearance of Rocketeer. A 9, 8, 10 years ago was averaging 131. It's now currently selling for 230, that is up 75%. Five years ago it was averaging 157, that is up 46%. And just a few months ago, back in January, it was averaging 182, that is up 26%. So this comic book isn't as high as some of these other on this list, but that's just because it doesn't have Dave Stevens' signature style yet, which he's more known for a few years later. Also, it's not a cover by him, and collectors really love Dave Stevens' covers. And plus, they're rebooting this franchise, uh, Rocketeer, sometime, and during the comic boom, that's when all the news came out, so it kind of went up, and it's kind of been going down, but it's been going up slightly since in the last few months. So let's learn a little bit about Dave Stevens. He was born in 1955 in Linwood, California. His family moved to San Diego, California when he was still in high school. Although Stevens was the completely self-taught artist, he figured he could use some improvement. So he attended San Diego City College for two years and took some art classes. In February, March of 72, my family moved to San Diego. I went to a city college downtown and took some art classes. During this time, he would draw for various fanzines or promotional material. He did do a cover in 1974 for a friend of his called The Creature, but that comic wasn't published until 1977 through some indie publications. They still exist today, but they're extremely rare and hard to come by. However, one did recently sell in a 9.6 for about $700. He would often go to San Diego Comic-Con in its early years, where he would show other artists his work hoping to get a job, and in 1975 he caught the eye of one man, Russ Manning, who took him as an assistant to work on the Tarzan Weekly newspaper strips, where he was the inker. Later, he also worked on the Star Wars newspaper strip as well. After about two years of doing the strips, he said he was burnt out and needed something different. He just really didn't like the deadlines and having to meet him all the time, which is something that will show up later in his career. So he moved to LA where he got a job at Hanna-Barbera drawing storyboards for their animation studio. He even got to work on storyboards for Indiana Jones, Raiders of the Lost Ark, and Michael Jackson's music video, Thriller. During his time as a storyboard artist, he really didn't want to go back into comics, but he said he would help out any friends that needed help meeting deadlines. One of these times, he helped out a friend who was working on the Marvel comics Star Wars. So many people don't know this, but actually Dave Stevens' first work at Marvel was Star Wars number six. The person that was drawing it needed help and he's fallen behind, and so Dave Stevens, as uncredited, inked some of the stories in there. So Star Wars six in a 9-8 10 years ago was averaging about 229. It now currently sells for $539, so that's up 135%. And then five years ago, it dipped down a little bit. It was averaging about $166, and that is up 225% now. And then back, this doesn't sell that often, but on average in 2022, it was averaging about $524, now selling for $539, so it's about 3%. Expect once people realize that this is Dave Stevens' like first official work at Marvel, this comic book will start going up even more. Um, but most people still are clinging to his iconic covers, and that's what people want. So this is just the beginning. So the thing with Dave Stevens, he was notoriously known to be very slow and meticulous as an artist. 
He wanted everything to be perfect. This is one of the reasons why he got burnt out doing comic books when he was on the Tarzan Weekly and didn't have much desire to go back into comics. Dave was the slowest guy in the building. An artist would go, God, I'm tired. I did 80 scenes yesterday. And somebody else would say, oh, I did 60. And Dave would say, I did five. So this next part is pretty funny. So this is where Hello Kitty comes into play. And it's just the sheer hubris of this company. So Hello Kitty is owned by a company called Sanrio. And Sanrio was doing pretty well in Japan. But they decided that they wanted to come and compete in America comic books and animation. They wanted to move them out of the way. They even had a press conference about how they were going to come here to America and then take over American comic books and animation. And so it's just, they're going to go against Marvel and DC and Walt Disney. Yeah, right. And so how were they going to do this? But first, they were going to release an animation called Metamorphosis, which was a Fantasia-style animated movie into American theaters, and also release their 100-page high-quality comic book that would consist of multiple artists, each telling different stories. This was to be called Lyrica, and Dave Stevens was enlisted to do a story in this book, which he called Aurora. But here's the funny part. The book was never released. Why? Because Dave Stevens was super slow at it, and by the time he actually finished it, the company already went belly up. This was largely in part to the fact that their animation, Metamorphosis, completely bombed right after their premiere in 1978. And so the company decided, yeah, we're not going to release the book either. And then that was the end of it. The only time I had done anything in comics at all after working for us was Aurora for Sanrio. He proceeded to take so long, the company had gone belly up, the whole operation had stopped functioning long before he turned it in. So since the company actually never released their comic book, Lyrica, the rights went back to Dave Stevens for his story, Aurora, and he later released it in 1982 in Alien Worlds number two. So this cover was actually by Dave Stevens. And about 10 years ago, a 9.8 was selling for $85 on average. Now it currently sells for 240. That is up 182%. And five years ago, it was selling for about $86, about the same, up 179%. And just recently, it was selling on average $150. That is up 60%. As you can see, Dave Stevens covers are kind of going up in value, but this wasn't really his first cover ever done. I mean, other than that fanzine creature number one, his first cover was actually on Pacific Comics for The Rocketeer. But this is kind of where the story gets a little interesting. So in order to talk about The Rocketeer and Dave Stevens, we kind of have to talk about Pacific Comics. Now, Pacific Comics was a little interesting. It was originally started in, in 1971 as a mail order catalog where you can send off and get, you know, some comics through the mail. And this was started by Bill and Steve Chance. And they were actually 13 and 17 when they started this. And then after a while, it became successful. So they opened up their own comic shop in Pacific Beach which is a place in California where I used to go all throughout my 20s and party. Pretty much now it's just like 50% bars and restaurants and just nonstop party scene over there. But they opened up a comic shop. Now that became pretty successful, but the issue was that they were having a hard time with distribution. So they decided to open up their own distribution place. Now that kind of really took off and they were actually making about a million dollars a year with their distribution channels. So then in 1981, they decided to do something a little different. They decided to open their own publishing. And for this, they took out a $300,000 loan at 25%. Yes, a massive, massive loan. And their first book they got was Captain Victory. They got Jack Kirby out of retirement to do this. And the only reason they got him out of retirement is because they said you can keep the rights to your character, which was not normal. If you work for like Marvel or DC, what they would do is if you drew or wrote anything, Marvel and DC own that character. And so they're kind of like image before image existed. And so their next comic book was Star Slayer and Mike Grail came over, but he was short on issue two and three and they needed a few more pages. So they asked Dave Stevens. And the reason why they knew Dave Stevens is because Dave Stevens used to go to that very comic shop all the time for years and years and years. And so they ran into him at San Diego Comic-Con, just had a casual conversation like, hey, how's it going? And it was like, would you mind doing a couple, like a backstory, your own story, your own character, you get to keep the rights. And because he got to keep the rights of his own character, he's like, sure, I'll do it. And so that's how you got the Rocketeer. Now what ended up happening to the brothers was they got in way too much debt. They were printing about 500,000 comic books a month and making about 3.5 million. So you think that would be a lot, but what was happening was all those comic stores that they would you know, distribute to, they weren't paying them. So they wouldn't collect on their debts. They ended up having about $740,000 in debt just a few years later after opening their publishing company and they couldn't really get it together. They didn't have the business expertise to kind of like sell the business. So they just filed for bankruptcy and that was that. 
Now back to Dave Stevens. Pacific Comics found out that whenever the Rocketeer was in one of their issues of Star Slayer, it sold about 80,000 copies. So they really wanted Dave to come and do like a full-time Rocketeer. But Dave Stevens was a little bit hesitant because he felt like maybe this might be short-lived. So he didn't really want to give up his day job and do a full commitment to this comic book. I kept telling them, look, at best it's going to be bi-monthly and maybe not even that. They didn't understand why I didn't just quit all my other <laughs> freelance gigs and do nothing but this strip. And I kept thinking, well, I would starve, I think, for everything. It was 150 a page. So that's why they decided to put him in his own comic book, Pacific Presents, which was going to be a bunch of different stories by a bunch of different artists. But by the third issue, he had once again slowed down and couldn't make the deadline. Also, he felt that Pacific Comics' new character, Cliff Hanger, was just a ripoff of the Rocketeer, which made him even more motivated to just kind of distance himself from Pacific Comics. He was set to finish his story in Pacific Presents number three, but due to delays, it was pushed to issue five, which never came out. This was the last cover he did for Pacific Comics. It's called Vanguard Illustrated number two. Now, as you can see, a 9.8 just a few months ago in January selling for $324. It is now selling for $375. That is up 16%. Five years ago, it was selling for $85. That is up 341%. And then a decade ago, it was selling for $55. That is up 582%. As you can see, this graph, it's just been going sky high recently in the last about six months. So within a few months after Pacific Comics closed down, Eclipse Comics came to him and said, hey, why don't you finish off your Rocketeer with us? And so he signed a contract with them, but he wasn't really that into him because the, he said that they were doing something shady and he just didn't agree with it. I did uh, a smattering of covers and then left as soon as I could. Although just with Eclipse Comics not very long, he did come out with some of his most iconic covers ever. And these ones are very valuable. So we got Air Boy number five. In January, just a few months ago, a 9.8 was selling for $350. It's currently selling for $809, up 131%. Five years ago, it was selling for a 9.8 was 103. That is up 685%. And then 10 years ago, it was selling just for $60. That is up 1,248%. We also got Crossfire, which is kind of like a Marilyn Monroe type cover. Crossfire number 12, a 9.8 just back in January was selling for 505. Currently selling for 595, up 18%. Five years ago, it was selling for 123. It's up 138%. And a 9.8 10 years ago was selling about 120. Now it's selling for 595. That is up 395%. And then we got DNA Agents number 24. In January, it was selling for 495. Currently selling for 819. That is up 65%. Five years ago, it was selling for 212, up 286%. And then 10 years ago, it was selling for 129. That is up 534%. After he left Eclipse Comics, he joined Comico in August in 1986. And the deal was he was going to do the Rocketeer Adventure magazine and it was going to be a limited six issue run. And he's going to split it up into two parts, part of three and a part of three. These guys will publish it and they seem solid. The Rocketeer Adventure magazine was the first new Rocketeer story in several years. Paid okay for those days, but there was never any back end. Originally, the first issue was supposed to come out in summer of 87. But then that got delayed due to Steven's like meticulous slow pace and financial reasons. He had to put the project of the Rocketeer on pause. And so during this time, he did a lot of different freelance covers, uh, some for Comico, but also some for Blackthorn Publications, which was Steven Chance's new publication, you know, the person that was from Pacific Comic Books. So here we got one for Blackthorn, Jungle Comics number one, and a 9.8. In January, it was selling for $1,200. Recently, it sold for $1,350. It's up 13%. Now, this doesn't sell very often, especially in a 9.8. But 10 years ago, it was selling for $100. That is up 1,250%. We also got Planet Comics number one through Blackthorn. A 9.8 in January was selling for about $1,227. It is currently selling for $2,291. That is up 87%. People really love this cover. And five years ago, it was selling for $273. That is up 739%. And then 10 years ago, it was selling for $138. That is up 1,500%. And then here's the big one. Johnny Quest number five. This is a 9.8 in January was selling on average $910. It's currently selling for about $1,000. That is up 10%. 
five years ago it was only selling for $130. That's up 669%. But 10 years ago, it was just selling for $38. Pretty much just case cost. That is up 2,531%. As you can see, these prices are rocketing straight up. And that's because Dave Stevens has really honed in his style. It's kind of that pinup Betty Page look that fans are really captivated by. After releasing the first issue, it would be another year before issue two would come out of the Rocketeer Adventure magazine, largely due to the fact that Stevens suffered a car accident. Soon after, Comico declared bankruptcy. So the reason why Comico went under was because in 1986, they had the bright idea of, hey, let's go back to the old style of selling comics on the newsstand. Now, if you don't know, newsstands where you go to like, say grocery stores, things like that, and they'd sell them. But during this time, comic book shops was like the number one way to get comic books. And the issue was, if you sell things in the newsstand, if they don't sell it, they ship it back to them and they get a refund. And that's why a lot of distributors were switching over to comic book shops because then the comic book shops would just keep them as back issues. Because they had to deal with all these refunds, they started piling up on debt. So what was their solution? Their bright idea was like, let's publish even more comic books, hoping that one of these new comic books will be a massive hit and kind of eat away at the losses of the other one. Well, it didn't really pan out and Comico went under in 1990. Many people might not know this, but there is a massive thorn in Dave Stevens' side, and that thorn was costing him a lot of money, and that was Marvel. Stevens was being sued by Marvel because they claimed that they had a group of supervillains that were called the Rocketeers from an old Daredevil issue. Stevens refused to change his character's name, which made it hard to continue his stories as he needed to keep doing freelance work to pay the legal costs. So you know who came to Dave Stevens' rescue? Disney. That's right, the Mouse House came to rescue Dave Stevens. Disney had gotten the rights to the film adaptation of The Rocketeer. With Disney involved, Marvel knew they couldn't win the fight, so they quickly dropped the lawsuit. The release of the film was a box office disappointment, so they scrapped any idea of a sequel. But it went on to be somewhat of a cult classic. They are in the process of rebooting it currently, although there has been many delays. So now we enter Dark Horse. Since he didn't get to finish it on Comico, he now signed a deal with Dark Horse in 1991 so he can finish off his Rocketeer series finally. The Rocketeer was my hobby. It was something I did in my spare time. I wasn't all that interested in doing a huge number of comics. And he was free to take it where he wanted to, and that was Dark Horse. As time went on, Dave's love of comics was slowly waning. By the time he finished the third issue of The Rocketeer, he was getting burnt out once again by comics. Although the deal was struck in 1991, the comic didn't actually come out until 1995. That would be the final original story that Dave Stevens would do on The Rocketeer. Throughout the rest of the 90s, for Dark Horse, he would just do the occasional covers here and there. So here's one of his covers that he did, Chevelle Noir, number one. A 9.8 in January was selling about 5.10. It is currently selling for 7.50. That is up 47%. Five years ago, it was selling for about 2.30. Now it's up 226%. And then about 10 years ago, it was selling for 160. And it's now selling for 750. So that's up 368%. After his time at Dark Horse, he's a kind of over comic books in general and left comic books completely in 1999. The whole experience of jumping from four publishers in a span of maybe a handful of years drummed all the enthusiasm out of me. I did make that three issue pitch at DC for the Rocketeer Superman crossover in 1998 that was met with complete resistance. So once he was done with comic books, what did he decide to do? He decided to go back to school and he got really into painting and really just wanted to hone his skills and just be a better artist in general. So I got so dissatisfied with everything I was doing from 92 on until about 99. If I can't bear to draw comic books anymore, maybe I can set this being a painter on fire. Just as he started to feel really good about art again, because he started painting and it was like a new medium for him, he got some really terrible news. He called me, my wife was in the room. She suddenly burst into tears. After further tests and things, they determined that it was hairy cell leukemia. Just a very rare blood cancer that attacks the marrow, basically, in the bones. Even though he was terribly sick, he would still love going to Comic-Con. Partly that had to do with financial reasons, but he just loved Comic-Con, and he would try really hard just to get it together so he could be in front of his fans, and, you know, he loved that. He would get a bunch of blood transfusions to withstand the rigors of exhibiting. This went on for years. I'm done signing. I gotta go lie down. And then he goes, but it's no big deal. Dave Stevens ended up passing away on March 11th, 2008. 
His last known cover that he did was Bad Planets number six, and that ended up coming out after he already died in November of 2008. He was a huge inspiration to a lot of artists, uh, especially Adam Hughes, who credits him immensely. There is a documentary about his life. It was released in 2022. It's called Dave Stevens, Drawn to Perfection. I definitely recommend that you watch it. I'll have a link in the video below. It's on YouTube, it's free, you can just watch it. Although he's no longer with us, his life continues on through his stories and his artwork for all of us to enjoy.